afternoon, everyone. Um, next is Michael. He's going to talk about SUSI. Um, and I'm going to let him start. I'm not going to take any time. We're kind of running a bit behind. So everyone, welcome, Michael. Hello. Does the microphone work? Yes. Very good. I hope this works as well. From roots to artificial intelligence algorithms. This is, of course, about SUSI. And uh, yesterday, I introduced why we are doing this project, and today I will get into details and explain how it works in, uh, in a very de detailed way. So, um, some time ago, 1986, already people thought that computer in the future are something where you can talk to, like Scotty in this uh, Star Trek movie. And this is uh, a bit coming true now, um, as we have seen yesterday in my presentation, also uh, Google starts to respond to uh, complete sentences with complete answers, directly without providing a link, or they have links, but they also have the answer, like uh, here also. And my idea about search engines in the future is that um, what, what should they do in the future? And um, maybe an answer is that they simply answer to, to all kinds of questions. So what's, what's inside the web is not that important anymore. People are simply searching for answers, and search engines of the future will just return these answers. Um, we created the LockLock project where we uh, collected billions of tweets, and we started to ask questions against this database, like who tweeted most about uh, uh, for Asia yesterday. So this is also a kind of uh, natural language question against the large database about uh, social media. And this is also something which should be answered in a, in a uh, um, natural language way. And uh, uh, all the big companies, Google, um, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft are now inventing these machines which are doing exactly that. Th these are the answers on the question, uh, what is the search engine of the future? It's something where you can simply talk to and it will give you any kind of answer. So what we are doing with the SUSI project is that we are creating a free and open source personal assistant. Uh, they call it sometimes uh, a smart speaker, but this is the, a, a very similar thing. So this is the open source version of it. It's considered to be an uh, artificial intelligence object. So if we want to do something like this, then we need to explain or need to understand what artificial intelligence actually means. So um, people have opinions, like you, with devices like that, you can be smart. Um, they think uh, work for you and maybe do unexpected things. But uh, we want to know it in detail. So. Artificial intelligence has a definition, and it, uh, it's that systems which think like humans or that think rationally are artificial intelligence systems. Maybe they act like humans or act rationally. Um, there is also the distinction between weak artificial intelligence and strong artificial intelligence. Um, there's, a, there's a big mixture of things, so people think things are intelligent if they just act like humans, but what it's actually built are very simple tools. So they can do something which a human can do in a very speci specific field, like uh, recognizing objects or playing chess and so on. It, they're not general intelligent. And this is the uh, distinction. Uh, the strong AI says it's like, like a human can think and act like a human. And in the past, it was also mixed up, uh, there was a mixture with the meaning that real intelligence only comes if you have a mind. So this is a, this, it's, it's not that a big discussion anymore about this. And weak AI means uh, you have a specific tool. So these are, this is the, the toolbox of the um, things you can have in artificial intelligence. Heuristics and constraint search is something you know from your navigation system. Um, a heuristic search is something which is done to find the best connection to, uh, the, uh, between two points. 
And um, this is a very normal thing. It's artificial intelligence from the algorithm, but it's a normal thing. Uh, learning with uh, reinforcement is something which is now uh, done with neural uh, networks, and it's very, uh, a very new field because it had been done already 30 and 40 years ago, but it wasn't very good. And because of the computation power and new com computation models, uh, they are now very strong. Then there's reasoning with knowledge and, log knowledge and logic and uh, uncertain knowledge with game playing. And reasoning with knowledge and logic is uh, where you have uh, um, automatic proof systems which uh, create something like expert systems. They have a knowledge base and they have deduction rules. And uh, you can apply these things if you have a specific knowledge in your you don't have uncertain things. And uh, certain knowledge is where you do uh, game playing. And 20 years ago, this, this field of reasoning, this was the stronger fi strongest field in uh, artificial intelligence from my perspective. And this is a very uh, um, interesting thing where we can also have a model for an, um, an expert system which creates a personal assistant. So other things you expect from uh, artificial intelligent system is that it can do uh, natural language processing with text to speech and speech to text then uh, being able to compute uh, with a large number of uh, data objects like we did in the Lockluck project where we have billions of tweets reasoning, ch reasoning chains that's what expert systems do uh, machine learning like uh, sentiment an analysis uh, for texts, then uh, you need, need something where you compute. That's what we do in the SUSE server, and where I get into detail. Then uh, you need something to handle accounts. So many people can access the same server, and it's computed for each of them individually. And you need this ecosystem of uh, different clients which access a server. And of course, you need um, user-defined skills, so people can contribute and uh, create uh, skills themselves. So it's, it's a complicated thing, and uh, it's something which we created already. We have created this e ecosystem of uh, uh, different applications, clients, and the ability to create skills uh, in an easy way. So um, the beginning of this idea was not to create artificial intelligence, but uh, what I did with the uh, Yassi peer-to-peer -peer search engine project was creating a search engine. And with the LockLock social media uh, harvesting engine, it's also a, a search engine. At a, cert at a certain point, uh, we thought that we must bring these things together so we have an aggregation level and uh, have then an, a, a search for all these things together. But after we found out that we can ask questions against this database, like who tweeted most about Force Asia and other uh, questions against the web database, we thought let's, let's get more elements inside, like conversation rules, so that we can formulate what kind of question can be asked and what kind of uh, result should be computed. Should the result be just a phrase, or should it be a picture, or a map, or, and so on. And then other sources came inside, uh, like uh, results from Wolfram Alpha and uh, from open uh, data sources and so on. So this is, this is the idea how Zuzi was created. It was not like, oh, let's create a chatbot, because chatbots are cool. It, it was the necessity to have an aggregation engine for different kind of sources of search engines. And that's a specific strong element in Zuzi, to be able to integrate data elements from outside. And once you create uh, new information out of this, you can feed it back into something like a reflection memory. And then it's something uh, which um, should be re represented in a common way. So all these, these data sources should be represented in a specific way that's similar to each other. And it should track a state so you know that one uh, information came from a cause. And uh, this this uh, data structure is called the Zuzi thought. So this is um, like uh, uh, Zuzi thinks, it goes from thought to thought. 
So, how, ca how can you do this? Um, we have this uh, backend server. The, it's available at api.suzyai. And if you do, um, not a search, if you put something in, a phrase into this field, then you get a JSON back. And that's what, the, that's what every client sees if uh, it's computing a res result, like a spoken access or a written access to the client. So it always gets this JSON back. And that's what you see here. That's a, a Susie thought. It's a, a, a computation step um, to uh, answer a question. And um, the question here is, uh, how is the weather in Singapore? And it returns an uh, answer object containing an action element. And the action element says, um, it's an answer. And it has an expression. So actions could be also not answers. It could be other things like switching on the light or playing music and so on. So the result of a, uh, of a query is a set of actions which are uh, executed after each other. So this, these are the elements you can compose if you, if you create your own skill. So this is the, the backend thing, and it's, it's really easy to, to test new skills and see what's, uh, what has exactly happened. Then there's the data object, and the data object collects everything which you have uh, accessed from external sources, but it also represents the internal um, variable space. So if you set uh, temporary variables, they are represented here, and you can do a debugging and seeing what's happening, happening there. To, go, to compute the result from a skill, we need a computation model. Um, it's not it's not a chatbot where, where you say, oh, this is the input, and then please give me that output. These, these chatbots usually are, are very simple. They are, you just put something in, and then you have uh, a national language processing, you're having a pattern. That pattern is represented as an intent, and the intent means you have to put something outside. Uh, the idea is that um, uh, Zuzi is able to act like an expert system. It can think about things. It can uh, have think about an option and then uh, uh, during that thinking fa finds out that this option is not a good option and that it should have an alternative. Um, this kind of computation is shown by Prolog. The Prolog um, uh, uh, language, uh, uh, there's an example for this language and um, um, this is the, the inspiration. Um, we have this uh, condition part and a predicate part, and if every uh, predicate inside the condition holds, then that uh, predicate is true. And this this program that's uh, quicksort in Prolog. And uh, in Susi, uh, the condition is the rule process. So what is the rule process? That that are all the things which must must hold true to produce an answer. And the predicate is something that's the answer itself. So we turn this thing around. So uh, everything which is an intent in, uh, in a bot is what here is a condition in uh, the rule. It's, it's not so easy to understand. You need to uh, know some uh, predicate, first order uh, logic, predicate uh, knowledge. So. Um, <laughs> Here's an example. Um, the Zuzi skill language has a very simple form. We can forget all these complex things and just write some uh, simple phrases like um, this one, shall I star? This is the simple pattern. And if a variable called mood is set to excited, then the answer is you will be happy. And uh, these are uh, the conditions. You have two conditions. One is that the pattern holds. And the second condition is that the variable set and the answer predicate is this one. So um, this very simple kind of language uh, can be used to create an expert system which creates the answer. So it's maybe completely different but, but from what you have seen from other kind of uh, chatbots or personal assistants. It's not that uh, difficult in the end. So the whole ecosystem, what's running in the server is that um, this 
deduction can only can take place if a specific uh, skill is found to, f to be computed. And because we are computing with patterns, uh, some uh, patterns can uh, fire at the same time, and so we need a ranking. Some um, skills must be computed first, and then other in a, in a, as a second option. Uh, in, in Prolog, the uh, order of uh, computation is not defined. It's, it's, it's open. And here we have a ranking of skills, which is necessary for uh, a communication. Um, so um, we have a learning component. Uh, we have a data memory where we can recall what was in a thought before. Uh, we can feed this back to uh, uh, the next query. And uh, we have these data sources, which I presented. Um, and uh, so we can access resources from the data, uh, from the web. And we have a skill resource, and we have also a special skill resource, which, is, uh, which are called dreams. This is the test bed for, no, for new skills. And uh, plugins um, is that um, maybe in the future, this is, this is not implemented. Other, all other things are implemented that uh, Zuzi is able to create uh, its own skills. So you could have a teach-in method. So Zuzi learns skills. This, is the, this was the first representation of the, the rules inside of Zuzi. It's a JSON structure. It's all, this, is, this is what internally runs. We have a, type of, we have a, a lot of uh, patterns which uh, cause that we start a process. This, this process can access data from an external source. This is like a, a SQL statement. And uh, then we have an action uh, which is uh, returned. And uh, the variables which had been computed inside the, the process is then replaced in here. And to make uh, uh, um, this kind of access to an outside, we need a console service, which is de described here. This is the access to an uh, external resource. So. Um, it's not that complex in the end because the rules are very simple, uh, with, which you describe, and this is compiled into this internal format. Um, because of time, I will jump to the skill description. This is a picture I took outside from the building because it, it says it takes 10,000 hours to master a skill, but this is wrong. In, <laughs> in this would be very long. Uh, I think it's 10 seconds. It's uh, what I show you, you, you will understand it instantly. So here is the example. The idea is that the skill data set can only grow is, if it is as simple as writing a wiki article. If it's more complex, people won't do it. But it's, it's at that simple. So this is the most simple skill. It's actually a text file. A simple text file where the input is the first line, if it matches, then the second line is the output. And many, many of the impressing features of Alexa, for example, I think they are all scripted in this way. It's not, there's no intelligent thing around it. And having a lot of these phrases makes a funny thing. And that's uh, an important uh, thing that if you uh, create an, uh, uh, a tool like that, that it's funny as well. So it should be easy to put in all these things which could, which could be funny. And um, Next example is that you can have alternatives in the answer, so it's a random answer, one of these. Next example is that you have uh, several inputs which cause to the same output. So you can say bonjour or ciao, and the uh, output is hello. Um, then a simple pattern. This is a placement for anything. So if, if you have anything inside, then uh, you get the output. And um, if you put something inside here, this is the same as here, uh, the previous example, but this is stored in a variable which is called one. So you can just output something called one. This is, at this time, not more than you know from Eliza, a very classic example, but um, this is just the simple things. So having more patterns means you have more variables. Then you can store one variable into a permanent memory. So this is memorized permanently and can access it uh, afterwards. It's not only part of an expression which is output, 
but it's also stored into this uh, beer brand variable. Then you can give this out again, and you can have uh, hidden assignments. These are visual assignments where something you can see in the expression is stored into a variable. But here you have a hidden assignment where the word excited is not shown, but just stored in the mood variable. And then you can uh, put this out again. Now this mood variable is something where you can have conditions on. So you, you can have rules which fire on specific conditions. And um, so uh, this, this is a condition where it only matters that something is set into this variable and here is, uh, it's required that it's set to a specific value. And uh, here's a, an, an example where you can have a uh, call back to itself. So function color is not, a, this is not a special word, it's just like a phrase. And you can access this phrase again in this example where uh, function color is called inside of a result. So Susi is calling itself at this moment. It, it's taking its answer from another answer which is computed inside. This is the reflection element. So uh, uh, phrases can be like meta phrases which are inside somewhere else. And uh, you can of course put in some JavaScript. So uh, if you start a line with this bang, then you can compute until URL in, um, in JavaScript. Uh, this can be, be more complex by using a variable. Um, and that's the final example, I hope, <laughs> which takes the result from an outside API. And that's the, that, that was the beginning of the idea to have a scripted metadata search engine, which is taking data from a JSON component, and then a specific element in that JSON is accessed. And to, uh, to uh, say which kind of element is accessed is uh, given in the JSON path, and that's the object statuses. So now there are the things which are not implemented. Thinking with backtracking, expert system with first order logic, skill reflection, skill read skills, so you don't call a skill, but you read a skill. Um, and skills, which create skills. And uh, Zuzi talks to you itself. So this, is, this can be done by going into the interface, uh, go to uh, Zuzi AI, click on the burger, make an account, click on skill, then you see all the skills, click on the skill, <laughs> click on edit, and there it is. That's a skill which takes uh, information what happened on and it takes it from this API and the JSON path is data events. And very easy thing to test this. Um, you can go to Dream Zuzi AI and it has, um, this is an etherpad and you can make an etherpad an instant input for a skill. So you can put in anything there. Um, I don't have time left I think. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Uh, come to uh, the, the, my, my table at the basement, I will show this to you. So, thank you.